Let's go ahead and jump into our demo. For today's example, we're gonna create a basic contact form. To get started, we're gonna click the Create button in the top right corner. What you'll notice is that you have the option to create a form, a survey, or a workflow. Now, how are these different? A form is going to be static with fields that can be used for collecting information from an individual. A survey will also be static, but it will show one question at a time on the screen, while a workflow is going to be more complex and would let you create a sequence of events for your form with multiple users and steps. Let's say you wanted the first part of this contact form to be filled out by a student or a patient and then passed on to another user to review. This would be a great option for that. For today, we're going to select our most popular option and review how to build a form. Once you've highlighted the option to create a form, go ahead and click Next Step. You will then have the ability to name your form and select a folder to save it to. We're going to name our form, and then you'll notice that you can see the form URL has automatically populated with the name I typed in the box. At the bottom right of this window, we have the option to use a blank form or a template. A template will already have preset fields placed on the form based on a selection of use cases, while a blank form will just be a clean slate for you to work on. For this example, we're going to utilize the blank form option. Now that we're in the builder, we can start diving into some of the options you have for working on your form. On the left hand side of your screen, you will notice a list of fields. Some basic like name and email, and some more advanced like credit card and rating fields. At the bottom, you'll also notice the option to add sections to break up your form. We're going to go ahead and add a section and then drag and drop the fields that we will be using for this contact form. For collecting some basic background information, we can use the name field, the email address field, and the phone number field for our examples. Let's say this was a contact form for a student and we want to show or hide certain fields based on the courses they were interested in and the language that they prefer. I'm going to add a checkbox field for our course options and a drop down list for our language preferences. I'll show you how to make these fields work for you in just a bit. Now that you've created fields on your form, you can highlight each field to make any necessary edits. For instance, let's say you want your name field to actually say student name. You can do that by adjusting the field label here. It's worth mentioning that all changes you make are live and do take place on the form itself. Moving forward, you can adjust all the fields as needed, as well as change the field type by selecting the drop down button beside the field that you've highlighted. This can be useful if you added the wrong field, but have the correct labels, uh, or if you're simply testing which field looks or works best for your use case. Now let's talk about logic and go over a few different examples of how it could work for you. Starting with our checkbox field that we added earlier, let's add some of the courses that we want to ask our students about. We can edit the field label like we mentioned before. And then from there, we're going to make field specific changes for the checkboxes that outline the courses our students would be taking. If you want to have a field that needs to be completed in order for the form to be submitted, you can make any field mandatory by clicking on the required box at the top of the general settings. Anyone filling out that form will see a prompt for any required fields that haven't been completed. It's important to remember that you can make your fields as simple or as complex as needed. Now let's take this a step further and add some logic like we mentioned earlier. Conditional logic on Formstack allows us to show or hide additional fields or sections based on how questions are answered. In our example, let's say we have a course we'd like to gather more information on. However, we don't want all students to see this field, only those that are interested after making their selection. We can use a combination of logic and a long answer field 
to find out more about our students' interests. First, we're going to go ahead and add a long answer field by dragging and dropping into our section. Second, we want to click on the field and highlight it to edit the label. And then last, we want to type in whatever we need to gather more details. Now that we've created our field and made the necessary edits, you can add logic to it by navigating to the top left section of this field, and then we're going to click on Logic, and then the button labeled Add a Rule. With Logic, you can show or hide a field based on an answer from a previous question. In this example, we only want to show this field if the student had chosen History as an option. We will go ahead and pick Show for anyone who chose this course, and then we will need to specify if we want this condition to be met in all or any circumstances. What this means is if you had a field where you wanted multiple conditions to be met in order for the logic to apply, you could use the option all. On the other hand, you would want to choose the option for any if there was only one condition that had to be met before the logic would apply. Once you've finished setting this up, a purple icon will appear on the field. We had previously mentioned that we'd like for our form to support multiple languages. Let's take a look at how we can accomplish that. Using the drop-down list we had previously added to our form up here at the start, we can determine which language our form would be in. To set this up, we want to make sure our drop-down list is set up for English, Spanish, and French. Now, once this has been set up, we want to create sections that contain the language-specific fields chosen from our drop-down. In this case, I've been working on our English-specific section and have already created an entire French section on a separate form that I can bring over and add below. Just as a side note, you can save sections and use them on other forms by selecting the section that you'd like to use for future forms and then clicking the Save option here at the bottom of our settings on the left. I'm going to go ahead and add our French section here at the bottom. Uh, if we want to add logic to show or hide sections based on the language that was chosen at the start of our form, we want to select the section and then choose the Add Rule option just like we did for our previous logic example. From here, we want to choose to show this section based on our language selection. In this case, it would be French. Let's go ahead and uh, make the same edit to the original section we created. You could also take this a step further and have specific sections related to what courses the students have chosen. There's a ton of different ways that you could customize your form and make this work for you. Now that we've added all of our fields and we've taken a look at how to use logic, let's explore some of the other options you have from the form builder. On the top right, we have the option to select form extras, and this will give us several additional options for editing our form, including the ability to have a save and resume feature if you have an extra long form and would like for your users to be able to complete it at their leisure, uh, or a progress indicator that can be used on a multi-page form alongside several other options that you can see here. Next, we want to highlight our style page where you can configure and make edits to your form to match your brand guidelines, uh, just over here on the left. Uh, now you can create a theme that can be used on all forms or use one of our templates just to show you what this looks like, I'll select a few themes to show you how it impacts the look and feel of the form, just here on the preview as an example. Moving over, let's go ahead and jump into our settings here on the top right and go over some of the features that we can use for our students and for our internal teams who would be reviewing these form submissions. On this page, we have our notification emails at the top and our confirmation emails at the bottom. Notification emails are meant for your internal teams to notify them when a new submission has been submitted and will always be turned on by default after you've created your first form. 
Confirmation emails are meant for our end users, or in this case, our students. Now let's take a look at some of the ways that you can make these features work for you. I'm gonna go ahead and create a confirmation email that would be sent out for our students. And then from here, we can set up who the email comes from, the subject of the email, and if we'd like to delay the message. By default, all the contents of the form would be included in this email, but you can choose to customize the page if you'd like and pull over any relevant content from your form on the right-hand side over here. This is a great option if you'd like to include some additional information that wasn't covered on the form, like if we'd want to include an estimate on the amount of time it takes before our students can expect to hear back. Uh, we can also include section headers or attachments if your form has a file upload option. It's also important to note that you can send more than one notification or confirmation email, and you have full control over which email goes where. For instance, let's say we have a student who chose history as the course they were interested in, and we wanna send an email only to the department to notify them of the submission. We can first create a notification email for that department with the specific email we have in mind. And then we can click on logic after we've created that email to set the criteria for when this email would be sent out. In this case, we only want the email to be sent out if history was selected, but you could have multiple requirements if needed. Now you could also apply the same method to a confirmation email if you'd like to send out a specific email to an end user with set conditions. Taking a look at some of our other features on our settings tab right underneath here, we also have our welcome and submission tab where you can create a message to be displayed before your form begins. And then we also have a submission message option for what would be displayed after your form has been submitted. When creating a submission message, you can also add logic if you'd like to have separate submission messages based on how the form was filled out. Let's say I wanted specific messages based on the course the student chose. We could set that up here, just like we did in our email example. Below that, we have our security section where you can add a password to your form or to your submissions by adding encryption. This is a great option if your form does contain any sensitive information. Moving down to our integrations page for our form, we have several different options for you to choose from, whether we want to set up a document generation in Formstack documents, uh, or if we want to create a contact in Salesforce, or potentially send an attachment over to Google Drive. We have a ton of options to suit your needs. It is important to note that the integration you set up is form specific and not account specific, but you can use the same credentials on other forms. Moving on next to settings over here on the top right, we have our share tab and depending on how you intended on sharing your form, we have a few different options for you. You can copy this URL if you'd like to send the form via email or text. If you'd like to include this form on an existing website, you could use this embed code right below the URL. Additionally, we also have the option here for a QR code. Now let's go ahead and jump in to see what our form looks like using the URL from this page. Looking at our form here, we're gonna select the language we prefer to show the section that we had previously set up. And then we'll also just do some testing so you can see what the logic looks like. And then we can select the course that we mentioned earlier so you can see how the logic works again. And we can go ahead and just fill out the rest to create a submission for testing purposes. Moving back over to Formstack and to our submissions tab, you can see all submissions that come through here, including the ability to filter your submissions, create custom filters according to your submissions, uh, or you can export or delete as needed. 
Just as an example, let's say we wanted to create a filter where we only see the submissions for students that selected history. We want to click on the add filter option, name our filter, and then set up the criteria. In this case, maybe we only want to see submissions with history as the course, but we could set up multiple conditions if needed. All right. Now, it's also worth mentioning that from here or from any of the pages that we looked at today, you can click on the eye icon on the top right to get connected with our support team or access our help center for additional resources. For example, let's say we wanted more info on our smart list feature. We can select the option to search for our help center and then we'd be able to find the appropriate article. And that takes us through our Forms 101 demo.